right? Okay, so you might look like a guy that used to beat this guy's daughter. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, two of the sales that I've had so far have been on TOs. Two out of five of them. Okay, so if if you if you got that problem, which you might have at first, because that's part of your learning experience, because that's when another guy comes in, he closes a deal for you, and you get half the deal. What's wrong with that, right? That's what that's your payment for learning the business too. That's how you're gonna you're gonna you you're gonna need some TOs. Even I need TOs, it don't matter. I'm not better than anybody else. There's people that, believe it or not, I know it's, you find this hard to believe, but there's people that, <laughs> that do not like my hyperactiveness and stuff like that. Do you believe that? <laughs> there there are yeah. people that don't like me. I, I find that hard to fathom. And see, I'm one of the people, I'm a people pleaser. And so I don't like people not to like me, so it really gets to me when they don't. <laughs> Would you like a show of hands? Huh? Would you like a show of hands? <laughs> 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 All right. Now, so everyone understands that the TO is, can happen anywhere in the sale, but that's a cardinal rule in the car business. It can happen at any step. Real quickly, before we go on to the other steps, because we are in step three, by the way, which is product presentation slash walk around. Make sure you write this down. This is the ABCs to selling cars. Uh, Ex-military man should be able to tell me what KISS stands for, K-I-S-S. Colonel? Yes. K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, stupid. Oh, it wasn't simple. <laughs> it's been a while though, right? Uh, uh, giving you all due credit. It's been a while. Okay, what this stands for. And here's an example of a trial close or middle ownership, just so you know. You're my customer. We're out on the lot or whatever. We're inside. And I'm saying, well, who's the first person you're going to show your new car to? Girlfriend. Cool. To answer that question, he had to mentally put himself in that car, showing it to his girlfriend. Understand what I'm saying? That's middle ownership. That's a trial close. Okay, so we are, a this is the ABCs to selling cars. I said C's as in plural, right? This is the ABC's. Now, remember I told you I had my own way of sell? This is the way I spell sell. Okay, so remember this, C-E-L-L, -L, like a cell phone. Okay? We're always going to be, we'll always be closing and always be selling. Now, the C in sell stands for control. What do you think the E stands for? What did I tell you 90% of what I had going for me was? Come on out. Enthusiasm. Hey, thank you. Who said that? Give me a hand. <laughs> Mr. Sponsor, thank you very much. Uh, enthusiasm. Oh, oh. Okay. What would you think the first L would be? My grandmother used to tell me this all the time. I'm sure you can't imagine this, but, you know, her, someone's saying this to me, but the good Lord gave you two ears and one mouth for a purpose. Listen. Listen twice as much as you talk. <laughs> Can you imagine anybody telling me that? And by listening, what do we do? Learn. We learn. Exactly. We learn what their wants and needs are because once you found out a customer's wants and needs, whether it be two door, four door, automatic, you know, what they need their payment at, and you and you provide all that, and if they want a reliable car, car gets good gas mileage, you need to provide all that. Do you really need to? I mean, it's congratulations on your new car, right? Like we did on the pin deal, right? That's not you're not selling anything from there on. This is the ABCs, ladies and gentlemen, and you're going to see a step three. On when I do my product, my walk around, and you might want to watch that when I do. Are you working tomorrow? I'll make sure you're there when I'm doing it tomorrow, okay? Um, so, because that's a key point, step three. All right? Now, step four. Everybody got this written down? Who stole the racer?
Step four, what would you think you'd do after you showed the product and did walk around and showed all the features and benefits on it? What do you think the next step would be? Demonstration value. Thank you, Daniel. Cheater. <laughs> the demo. Short for demonstration. Now, and you will see on step three when I do my step three, because a lot of people, I, I'm not going to say anybody gets it wrong, but I've found that it works better if you make sure you are in the driver's seat when you, after you do your walk around, because you drive the car off the lot first. I'm going to give you a reasoning behind that. How many times have any of you got someone else's car you never drove, and you hit the brakes, and it's like, wow, your brakes are touchy. Or you hit the gas, wow, man, you're, you know, man. So, okay, well, what that's, if, if you drive the car off the lot, and everything drives perfect, and then you pull over and let them drive, and then all of a sudden the brakes jerk or something like that, there's going to be a red flag that starts sculpting that subconscious part of the mind. Then it's going to go, wait a minute, he drove it, it was fine, then it's going back down. But if you let them drive it first, and that happens, you'll never get that red flag back down. So now you put another red flag up there, when you already got some of them down, because you've gotten that far already with them, so you got that guard down, and got the red flags down over there, and now you just put more up there. So always drive the car off the lot first. Okay? Follow me? Now, you try to always make right hand turns. So if you can make a, a pattern to where it's right hand, one of the reasons is, is so you don't go across traffic. And you know, they say you want to try to stay away from going past other car dealerships. Okay? So, you know, and every, most guys have a planned route. If you, when you come aboard, you tell, you know, you talk to one of the salesmen, they'll tell you what their demo route is. Okay? Now, there are times that you might have a customer, and here again, you have to think on your feet. You might have that girl that's getting, you know, well, i got to wash my hair that night, but then she starts coming back your way. Well, you know what? Maybe I'm free to... There's times when you don't know if you've gotten that customer all the way over the fence yet. There's times, and at that time, if you want to know if they're honestly going to buy a car from you that day, then what you need to do is have them make a left-hand turn across traffic. And when they're turning, and when they have to make sure they're watching for traffic, you ask them, now, is this car you consider buying today? Because they can't, they're thinking about the traffic, and they can't lie when they're doing that. It's going to be almost impossible. You're going to get an honest, honest answer. That's the only time you do that. Okay? I'm sorry it's going to be your side that gets hit, too, if they, if they, if they're not paying real good attention. <laughs> All right. You now, me do it. Now, on the way back into the dealership, the customer's driving. Okay, now in step two, we've already found out they have a trade-in. But anyway, you're going to say, Mr. Customer, could you park the car right over here in Sold Row? Uh -huh. Okay? See if you get any response. A lot of times you won't. Sold Row is wherever the heck you want it to be that day. Now, I prefer Sold Row to be right next to their trade-in, to pull it right next to their car. Because you already know that, step two. That's part of the piece of the puzzle. We'll go over that tomorrow. Here's the reason why, gentlemen, because we have a step four and a half. Ready? Four and a half? Four and a half? It's called a silent appraisal. How many of you have traded your cars in the car lot or sold your car, but you got a price off the internet of what that car was worth? How many of you, raise your hand, how many checked the value of cars before you went and bought them or went and traded it? Pretty much every one of us, haven't we? Okay, well, first of all, most of that stuff is 90 days behind what the market really is. Second of all, it doesn't tell you that that's a car that, uh, you know, make, you've got to make sure it passed state inspection, okay, uh, that that's, the brakes are good on, that you don't have to do any mechanical work on, okay, because poor condition doesn't mean running condition. Poor, fair, and good means the looks of it, not the drivability, okay? So, if it's got mechanical issues, that's far and beyond, and that's poor. Okay? These customers don't realize that. And they're thinking the highest figure out there. Okay? So, when you get out of the car, and they get out of the car, Mr. Customer, can I get the keys to your trade in, please? I'm going to go ahead and get some numbers off of it. You walk in right over to the car with them. You're getting the VIN number off of it, which, by the way, is the vehicle identification number. You're going to touch the cracked windshield. You're going to touch all the loss of gloss, faded paint. You're going to touch the hail dings. You're going to touch the bald tires. You're not saying a word. You're going to touch every scratch and ding on that car as you're doing it, as you're looking around it, okay, and touching all that stuff. 
What do you think in their mind that they're noticing and you're not saying something? Because you're not down in their car, but they're already thinking, oh my goodness, he's brand new and he's seen that windshield already. Oh, he's seen them dents. They're getting the price down. From that 8000 that the internet said, they're thinking, oh my God, it was it's 400 bucks to put that windshield in. Oh, he noticed the hail damage. Oh, I got a check for 2500 on that. Um, you know, so they're getting their value down, okay? We got to get them down to reality, okay? So you're doing it by not saying anything. Then you're going to get the car. You're going to start the car up. You're going to put your hand and wave your hand, turn the air conditioner on and wave your hand in front of the vent. Seventy percent of all people trade their car as soon as the air conditioning is broke, especially nowadays. Because it can cost, you know, at least three grand to get an air conditioning unit fixed. Legally anymore, you cannot just put Freon or whatever in it. You have to find out where it's leaking, fix that problem, then put the Freon in it. So they know that. So here's what's going to happen. You're not going to say a word if you're going to be going like this. You're going to see it. They're going to go, oh, my mechanic said all you need to do is put a little Freon in it. That's it. Okay, but we don't say nothing. We just, you keep that for later if they're being ridiculous on their trade-ins deal. Okay, we, then, 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 then you can use that as a closing tool if they're still way off on their trade. You're going to say, now, Miss, I was talking to my manager, and he said that uh, nowadays, legally, no one can, unless you've got a backyard mechanic, um, you know, that's going to do it for you, which is against the law, but um, no one can just put free on it anymore. They have to find out where it's leaking from, fix that, and that could cost at least $3,000 on your car. Okay, so, and that way you put it off and you let them know. That's the law. It is the law. Okay, so, but 70% of people will trade that car because of that. Matter of fact, the people who were in the last night, what is their problem? AC don't work. AC don't work. Okay, so, I don't make these things up, I'm telling you, this is the truth. All right, step five. So you, you see a reason for a silent appraisal, right? Did everybody see a reason for that? All right, step five. We're going to take them. I'm going to take them. You're my customer. You're the parts guy. This is Mr. Kenneth. He's buying a new Mustang outside. And uh, I just wanted you all to meet. And you're going to say, okay, well, welcome to the family. Congratulations on, you know, on your new Mustang. If there's any questions that Ron couldn't answer for you, um, here's my business card. If you need any accessories, any help on parts, feel, feel free to give me a call or if you have any questions right now. And here again, thank you for your business and welcome to the family. Okay? Same thing with the service people. Just go right out and introduce them to service people. Okay? I, um, I've always sold my family cars. I always sold French cars. But I always found that it gave my family, made them feel special. And like I said, I live by the model. I like to treat every customer like I do my friends and family. Now, and I've done this ever since I've been selling cars, but now it's in a lot, almost everybody stepped to the sale in every dealership in the nation. It's selling parts and service department. But, but I used to always think, I said, you know what? It makes my family feel special because I used to go introduce them to everybody in the dealership. Everybody. I go to the ladies in the office. I don't want you all to go to the office and stuff. But do go to the service and parts. And it made them feel very special. Okay? And what you're doing is, is you're reinforcing and you're, you're always be closing, always be selling when you tell them you're buying this new, you know, new uh, Mustang out here, whatever. That's trial closes. It's mental ownership. Okay? So, all right, that's step five. Now, step six is a write-up. Now, I'm going to go backwards a minute. I'm going to go to step two because we're not going to get into pieces of the puzzle until tomorrow, but you don't even ask the pieces of the puzzle until you ask this question first. And you can write this down because there's no sense in wasting their time, your time, my time, our time, anybody's time. Okay? You ask the Mr. Customer, is there anything other than terms, your terms, and or figures keeping you from taking the delivery of a car right now? In other words, we want to make sure that we're not waiting for his humpback brother to straighten up. But seriously, we want to make sure that his wife doesn't have to be part of them. You know, we want to make sure all decision makers are there. Okay? And everything that we need is to make the decisions can be done now. Not today, but now. But you gotta read you gotta kinda read your customer because some customers the word now can be as you're being high pressure on them. But there's some of these logical buyers that when you say uh, today they seriously will buy a car today, but what they want is get all your figures and then go buy it somewhere else. Don't let that happen. That's why I say now. Okay? Because, yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll buy it today. Yeah, nothing to keep me. Yeah, no, no, I'll buy it today. So they get all your figures. You get them a hunting license so they can go out there and bag your deer. Okay, you, you've done all the work for the other dealer because they will do that. Trust me, gentlemen. Yeah. They will do that. The Edge I sold, they came from the Nissan dealership. There you go. Numbers. 
You know, and I, there's been times where, you know, I've had customers, they were down to a number of shop, and I said, I'll make you a deal. I said, I'll tell you what, if that's what you're going to do, I don't blame you. I, I would do the same thing, but I want to be your salesperson. I think I deserve to be your salesperson, okay? So go out, get your best deal, come in, and I'll, we'll beat it. I don't want to give you uh, a figure that any dealer's going to beat. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, if you go out and get, you know, you come back and figure with here, we're going to beat it by at least $100. Okay, same thing is, They're, the competition's going to do that to me. Please let me be the person that's your salesperson. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm going to take care of you after you sell, uh, sell you the car also. So, and I've had some that just, you know, they said okay, and they did it that way. But I don't want you doing that right off the bat because you're not experienced enough to be doing that. Because, you know, the manager would probably be like, what did this guy teach you? <laughs> All right, but I'm just telling you, you have to think on your feet. Okay, let your managers know. You're your, their eyes and ears. Let them know. I'll know if I have a salesperson that always has a problem getting someone inside or they always have the same excuse, this guy has to have a price, the guy has to have a price. Everyone, then there's a problem. There's somewhere, somewhere along the line that you've got, you know, something's broke. Okay? Something's broke in your step to the sale. There's somewhere that you're, you know, you can always check yourself. You can look at and analyze. You need to always be checking yourself. This is your business. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. Nothing. <laughs> oh, wow. So, upside down. Oh, was he? Wow. No, I, I dropped it. Oh, yeah, it's all, it's all good. And then I was doing it upside down. Oh, there you go. All right. Now, so, um, and then, so that that's what you write down. It, Mr. Customer, is there anything other than terms, your terms, and or figures, keeping you from taking delivery of a car right now? In other words, is a is subject to your wife, you know, we want to know all the decision makers here. We want to make sure we're not waiting on an uh, uh, inheritance check coming six months down the road, okay, whatever it may be. I understand. Uh, trust me. We could sit here and go over millions of hypotheticals <laughs> that I've, I've seen happen and millions more that, that I haven't even seen yet that happen right now. So, all right. Um, I don't know if anyone's going to drink this Coke, I guess I'm going to drink it. That's for you, Dad. <laughs> well, if he knew I drank Mountain Dew right now, he'd be kicking my butt. I couldn't even have friends. He would ask me what kind of beverages you, uh, does your, uh, your friend's parents buy him. If they buy him Pepsi, you ain't hanging out with them. That was a customer in our family, Pepsi. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, my dad Don't would bring like, that girl home. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring that girl home. Yeah, that's right, bro. <laughs> I kid you not, man. It was, it was our religion. All right. Now, so, just remember, now, there's a follow-up rule. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, there's no ladies that I know of. Unless some of you kind of dress and drag at night, but that's all good. I still love you. What up? Oh, Daniel, you, okay, it's okay. I still love you, Daniel. <laughs> it's good. All right, now, if... <laughs> <laughs> I got a little off track there now. I forgot what the heck what I was going to say. Boy, this tape goes to two websites all right. tonight. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> 7-Eleven rule. 7-Eleven rule. Follow every customer up till they buy or they die. 7-Eleven. Everybody knows what the 7-Elevens are, right? If they, if they come in before 11 in the afternoon, you call them by 7 o'clock that night. If they come in between 11 and 7, call them before 11 the next morning. Got me? Yeah. And after you sell a car, follow them up that day. Three days later, a week later, and then once every week for a while. Ask them, if it's, is anybody that's seen your car, uh, do you know if anybody's seen your car that might be interested in buying a new car? You know, any friends, family? You can send me some business? Okay. Bird dogs. Bird dogs, there you go. Yeah, you learned that yesterday, didn't you? 50 bucks. 50 bucks here. We'll have to get Nick off there, give him, give him 100. <laughs> All right. So. That is one of the places steps in the sale, following up your customer, okay? So on step six, we're going to ask them, Mr. Customer. Here, I had it written out. I did it with you yesterday, didn't I, Daniel? Which one? The, um... Did you present the manager? Yeah. Yeah, you did, but you did it on a blank piece of paper. Oh, uh, okay. All right, well, let's act like I have this written down. Write it down. No, wait. Here we go. How do you spell your last name, Kent? P-H-A-M. P-H-A-M. 